Morning all. All right, so news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet, as well as a preview is there's just two games on Monday in the National Hockey League. There's 13 tomorrow, two today. So uh, we'll start off with the news, starting with Kulikov. Kulikov has a hearing today for an illegal check to the head on Connor Sherry. So we'll know what the suspension is going to look like there. When it's a hearing, it's automatically a suspension. There's only been one exception to that I've seen over the last six years where they have a hearing and then it becomes a fine. But it's it's almost always uh, a suspension, so we'll see how many games Kulikov gets. It was an ugly hit, so we'll see. Uh, Wayne Simmons has announced his retirement from the National Hockey League. He did not play this year. He played last year, of course, for Toronto. Uh, he's going to sign a one-day contract to retire as a Philadelphia Flyer on April 13th. So good on him. Uh, 1,037 games played in the National Hockey League, 263 goals, as well as 263 assists for 526 points. And yeah, pretty solid career all around. Uh, he was able to, to drop the gloves. He was able to score goals. He was a power forward. And uh, towards the end there in Toronto, he, he embraced the fourth line role and did what he could for the team. And so all the best to him in retirement. Uh, Ryan Bacher, first round pick of the Montreal Canadiens, is joining Laval, uh, brought over as his season has ended in the Swiss League. So uh, Ryan Bacher, uh, a lot is expected of him by Montreal management. I know there were a lot of Montreal fans that were not necessarily overly pleased with the team picking Ryan Bacher when they did, considering some of the other names that were out there. But he does have high upside, and there were some who supported that decision as well. So with Ryan Barker coming over, we'll see. Um, I really think he is that A-level prospect on the blue line the team's needed. And so, yeah, now he'll get a chance to show what he can do uh, at the end of the season in Laval and maybe at some point get a call up to Montreal as well. You might as well see what you got with the guy. Uh, so the Vancouver Canucks, this is not really a surprise. Patrick Alvine, when asked about whether or not they would re-sign uh, Lindholm. Now, at the time they acquired Lindholm, they're like, yeah, we'd like to keep him. But again, I feel like when Patterson re-signed and with the way the team has played since picking up Lindholm, it's giving them uh, second thoughts. And and it would make some sense. So he's non-committal now about whether or not they're going to keep him and, and does talk about the team's re recent record. And that, yeah, things haven't quite gone the way they want them to. And that, that makes sense. Like if Lindholm's still going to be asking for big money and he has every right to do so, uh, I don't think that the seven points in 19 games since joining the Canucks uh, is going to sway them to, to part with that kind of money. Not saying that it won't happen at all, but I, I can't see it. I can't see how financially the Canucks can make that work. I think once Patterson signed the extension, Lindholm became a rental, uh, but we'll see. He's still trying to find his way in Vancouver, and sometimes players just don't. Sometimes it just doesn't work. It's a bad fit with, with, with the team, and they move on. That would be my guess with Lindholm. And then we'll see in the offseason where he might go. But uh, I, I don't know if he's, like, the rumor was he wanted $9 million a year. I don't think he's going to get $9 million a year uh, this summer. That being said, the salary cap is going up. There's going to be some teams that have a ton of money to spend. And maybe Lindholm gets that money. Uh, so Ryan Johansson, in an interesting storyline with the Philadelphia Flyers. So they acquire him for Colorado and they put him on waivers. He clears waivers. They haven't sent him to the minors. We now know why he hasn't been sent to the minors. Uh, an injury. And when he was picked up from Colorado, he told them that he was dealing with an injury. So they sent him to their, doc to their team doctors. And their team doctors are like, yep, there's an injury here. And it requires treatment. So the rule is you don't send a player to the American Hockey League when they're dealing with an injury. Uh, that's why you see guys put on injured reserve at the start of the season who aren't going to make the team. And then once that injury has been rehabbed, uh, then they get put on waivers or then they just get sent down. But uh, NHL teams aren't able to send down a player who's dealing with a nagging injury like that. So uh, Johansson may very well be with the parent club for the rest of the season. Uh, it was quite obvious when Danny Breer picked him up at the deadline. There wasn't much of a plan to keep him around. Uh, but yeah, so we'll see We'll see what happens uh, with Johansson uh, going forward. But it, it definitely looks like he's with the team for at least a while, at least rehabbing an injury. Uh, so the GM meetings start today. I, it doesn't sound like there's going to be anything earth-shattering out of them. Uh, we may hear some, some rumblings later on today, though. Uh, rule changes get discussed on day one. Suspensions get discussed as well. So George Peros comes in, talks to the GMs. Uh, they get more information from him on suspensions and what is or isn't a suspension than we get. 
Um, and GMs may very well take the opportunity to discuss things with him and sit down with him one-on-one -on -one, uh, about certain situations, suspensions, maybe situations where there wasn't a suspension, and just try to try to get some idea of where the line is. Uh, but they do talk about what gets called in the playoffs and, and what the standard is for officiating. And so, yeah, the, the GM meetings, we may see something come out of this. Uh, but any kind of binding changes would happen over the summer, right? So we'll see how it goes. I think it's I think it's just a good time for guys to go down to Florida and and hang out, um, play some play play some sports while they're down there. You know, maybe a little bit of lawn bowling, and and just discuss stuff. It's a pr pretty good racket if you can get into it. But anyways, yeah, GM meetings start today, and and I hope they go well, and uh, we'll see if anything comes out of that. Uh, but don't expect any earth-shattering news. It doesn't sound like anything major is going to go down. Uh, so two games tonight in the National Hockey League. Again, it's a quiet Monday. We've got four Mondays left, and then the regular season is finished. Uh, and then at that point, we get into the playoffs where two games is considered kind of standard. And, and you know, you might get four. Some days you might get five, but, yeah, that's about it. So tonight we've got two games, one starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific, that's the Washington Capitals and the Calgary Flames. All four teams today that are playing are below the playoff line, but all four teams uh, still have aspirations for playoffs. And the Capitals are not far out. So they're 32-25-9 overall. They had to be happy with yesterday's results. Uh, the Islanders don't get a point. Detroit doesn't get a point. Of course, Philadelphia has been struggling. So really, the door is wide open for the Caps, who are 6-4, and four, and they won the first meeting between these teams on October 16th, 3-2 to two in a shootout. Uh, Ovechkin, 19 goals, 31 assists, 50 points. Uh, he's on the verge of another 20-goal season. That would be his 19th. Uh, on the Calgary side, they're 33-29-5. and five. They're also 6-4 and four over their last 10. Uh, my, pretty, pretty dim playoff hopes there, but it's still there. Uh, Sharon Govich, 28 goals, 22 assists, 50 points for him. He's been absolutely fantastic this year with Calgary. Um, and I would say the Toffoli trade, they won it. I'm just going to straight out say they won it. Toffoli's now gone to, to uh, Winnipeg. And so I, I really think when you look at the assets they got for Toffoli, you look at what Sharon Govich is doing, I think that was a win for Calgary. Uh, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific start between the Buffalo Sabres and the Seattle Kraken. Seattle won the first meeting in Buffalo on January 9th by a score of 5-2. to two. Uh, Buffalo's 32, 31, and 5, and they're holding on to their faint playoff hopes as well. They're 5, 4, and 1 over their last 10. Uh, J.J. Paterka has really taken that next step this year. He has 21 goals, 19 assists, 40 points. He's been very good. Uh, on the Seattle side, they're 28, 26, and 12. They're 4, 5, and 1 in their last 10 games. Uh, so they're, I mean, last I saw they were 9 points out. I, I should have put it on the board, shouldn't I? Eh, it's fine. Um, but yeah, McCann is, I think, their best forward. 27 goals, 26 assists, 53 points. And for Seattle, um, they're just, they're going to need some help if they're going to get out of this deficit they have between themselves and the playoffs. And I don't know that there's enough runway left for that to take place. So that'll be an interesting matchup because for Buffalo, they really, this is a must win, but it's a must win for Seattle too. So don't be surprised if there's some fights in these games tonight. And if these teams seem kind of chippy right out of the gate, because they kind of have to be. Let me know your picks in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to let me know uh, your your thought on any of the news of the day items. I also get a kick out of people that, uh, when we have the the posts of, hey, you know, here's who I'm taking for tonight. I say, oh, these degenerates with their, their gambling. Nobody's gambling on this channel. Nobody's paid a cent to anybody on this channel. Uh, we just like to have a competition where people... You know, say, here's who I think is going to win. We do have someone keeping track of who has the best win-loss record. And at the end of the year, that person gets a THG sweatshirt. So there you go. That's the whole degenerate gambling thing. Uh, that's how far that goes. So just thought I'd throw that out there. I've started seeing those posts more lately. So I just figured, hey, you know, it's they're, we're all degenerates, just not for gambling. But anyways, there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support as always. If you haven't already hit like and subscribe, please do. Thank you for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.